Well, unfortunately, I am still waiting, but I thought I might as well make the most of that. So, while I'm here, I thought I'd have a quick look at all our storage facility, where all of our bits and pieces have been stored since, well, frankly, about a year ago. So, I just wander through here, a little maze of storage units. There's loads of these sort of things all over California. Obviously, we've all seen those shows. Like, yep, there you go. <laughs> actually, auction stuff. So if you don't pay, you might actually lose it. But there we are. Just going to open that up. So, in here, look what you could have won. So there's an awful lot of stuff going on in here. So we've got a load of stuff that's going to have to go off to Goodwill. Loads of other stuff's going to go off to some friends. And the rest, hopefully, somehow, it's going to have to get back to the UK. But you can see here we've got our bicycles. And I think it'd be quite nice, while we're still in California, to go down on the boardwalk, have a bit of a ride, just to get back to good old times, yes. <laughs> oh dear. Well here we are on the boardwalk of Newport Beach, taking in all that lovely ambiance, which is rather delightful. It's very, very pretty down here. Obviously you can see scorching sun, which is fantastic. But also because of all the rains recently, there's loads of flowers out on the sand as well, which is rather lovely. But I thought while we're here, enjoying what I used to do when I was actually allowed out of the workshop. Fantastic way to spend some time, actually very relaxing. Thought I might answer some questions. This could be a little dangerous, but hey, let's give it a go. So the first question is from Simon Page, and actually many, many other people asked it as well. Is, what are the chances of doing a show similar to or with Mark Evans? Well, Mr. Evans is a very clever man, and not only is he a fully qualified vet, he's also a rather good builder. And of course, as we've all seen him doing shows for the Isborne cars and helicopters and all kinds of other stuff that he built, he had a fantastic series. And what was principally different about his series, of course, is he did those builds over an entire series rather than over just an hour. So there's much more detail and stuff. So for that reason alone, definitely up for doing some of that. But also, Mark himself would be a great guy to work with. So I guess. We'll have to wait and see. Right, well the second question is from Dale Brignall and he asks, what happened to Paul and do I plan on working with him again in the future? Well, Paul kind of retired a little bit just after series 12 I guess it was and uh, I believe he's now got himself his own little workshop and he's beavering away but it would be great to get him back out into the land of TV hell and um, get him working on some new projects because we did some amazing stuff in the past and it'd be great to work with him again in the future. So let's see if we can get him out of retirement. Hmm. Right, the next question is from Gary Stubbs and he asks, do I have any interesting future projects on the horizon? And he would love to see me working with either Fuzz Townsend or Chip Foos. Well, obviously, as you know, I left the show with nothing to go to. So at the moment I've got nothing but possibilities which is fantastically exciting. I'm gonna to have to pick something and I have to pick it quite soon I think but um, it's gonna be an amazing show whatever it is that we do and I'd love to work with so many people so I have to think of something maybe I can try and find a show that means I can work with absolutely everybody. I'm gonna to love to do a wonderful lead sled out of a Bentley S2 with chip perhaps and do some SOS type stuff with fuzz who knows, obviously good old Jay Leno would be wonderful to work with as well, of course. I mean, there are so many, the list is almost endless. So again, let's see what happens. Any more suggestions on that, please keep them coming, because you never know, I might not have thought of that one yet. Right now, next question. This is nearly hazardous, as I suggest. So we've got, now apologies for this pronunciation, but it looks like Zuriagazo della Charca. Now I'm guessing that might be female, maybe male. Anyway, they ask, uh, your expertise with mechanics, body repairs and upholstery is unusual. Could I explain how those skills were developed? Well, frankly, how far back would you like to go? I'm just going to adjust the camera. <laughs> there we go. But if I just stop suddenly, there we go, even better. Now it's slightly wonky. Hang on one second, I'll straighten it again. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Uh, almost fantastic. Right, so, as I was saying, how far back would you like to go? Because at the end of the day, there we are. I mean, I started way, way, way back with Lego, so I kind of got into making things a long, long time ago. And then I started playing around with product design, 
for design and technology at school, engineering product design way back at university, so I've got a degree in that, and then really just gave me an idea of how things work. So as, as a kid, I used to take things apart and eventually put them back together again. Sometimes they even worked again as I was going, which is quite a good. And then once I got into the design thing, obviously I started also playing with cars. My first car was a Beetle in 1303, and um, that was a great little car, although it broke down almost immediately after buying it. Got one trip into to the beach and then it failed its MOT, and then I had to learn how to kind of work on cars from scratch. Now I happen to have an Imperial socket set because my dad worked on minis when he was younger, and uh, I found out quite quickly you need to have the right tools for the job, obviously because Beetles are metric. So I slowly bought a tool, Every time I need to do a new job, I buy that new tool. And then I asked an awful lot of questions of some chaps up the road. So if you imagine on the Rolls Royce, you've got the spirit of ecstasy on the front of the radiator, or the top of the radiator. Well, they had this idea that I was the spirit of ignorance because <laughs> I asked so many questions, but that's how you learn. And then you just give it a go. And when it goes wrong, you give it another go. And as you go, keep going. And I'm leading to lose my camera again. <laughs> so I'm just gonna reset and carry on. I have another question here from Paul Shrimpton. Now, he asks, During Wheeler Dealers, you worked on loads of your favourite cars, but what are the real British classics you regret never getting into the workshop? Well, actually, there are so many. i a bit sneaky, oh, and I've written a list, which is what I'm going to try and read as I go along. Obviously, first of all, a convertible E-Type, that would have been absolutely fantastic. We did the metal top, but I think the convertibles are slightly sexier in look, so that would have been great. A Hillman Imp, obviously. A Rolls Royce. We missed the anniversary of the Shadow. It would be fantastic to do a Corniche convertible. That'd be wonderful. And of course, a Mark One Capri. Obviously, it's something I need to revisit. The original Capri we did, the laser was a bit nasty, and really could have done with being done properly. So a Mark One would be a nice way to fix that. A transit van. How come we haven't done the backbone of England? What's all that about? And then of course an Aston Martin DBV8. Wonderful, wonderful car, really manly butch car. Love to do one of those. And then just to go to sublime to ridiculous, how about a P Trident or a P50? Those crazy tiny little cars, I would love to try and squeeze myself into one of those actually for a test drive rather than just in a great big hall. You might have seen we did that a long, long time ago. A mini pickup. I know we've done a lot of minis, but a mini pickup is just super cool. And that'd be a great fun thing to have a go at. Also, I'd like to do a motorbike of some kind, maybe a Triumph or a Norton something classically British, but still very groovy. And then maybe go even crazier, maybe like a tractor, like a, a Ferguson TE20, you know, that old classic as well, because tractors are cool and they have lots of similar engineering to cars, but lots of little quirks as well. So it'd be lovely to have a little play around with that. And then we could go really, really crazy, maybe do a JCB or even a tank. Let's see what happens. Still got shows to do, remember. So I've got another question from Lee Acklin. Did the Anfi car need special paint? Well, as you can remember, it took quite some doing to get rid of that inch of filler that was all over the bodywork. Had to soda blast that off. Once it got down to bare metal, all the repair works were done. Got some primer on there and then used a special kind of rubberized paint, if you like, a bit like a rubber dinghy to make the car completely waterproof, theoretically. And then we painted on the top coat and the color. So actually we did use a special paint. The thing is, haven't seen the car since we actually did that work, so who knows if it's still keeping out water. All right, well actually now, oh, got a little bump there, it's the last of the questions because I'm coming up to my favourite Newport Beach eatery, which is the Dory Deli. And I think I have, I have a nice, well-deserved beverage. And here we are. 